today I will show you how to create your own drum sounds using a synthesizer and I decided to use the almighty Nord lead for this task it might not be the best uh, synthesizer for creating drum sounds because of the sound uh, yeah I like the sound of the Nord lead but it's not the most analog or most uh, deep sound or something like that but um, uh, it has a very nice interface for um, understanding how uh, the creation of the drum sounds works and uh, another thing is that we can use four separate parts and this means we can use um, the Nordly to create four different uh, drum sounds at the same time okay I assume that you uh, know already how a synthesizer works uh, but um, I will show you some specialties about the Nord lead uh, that you have to keep in mind when you are creating a drum sound. At first uh, we have two oscillators that we can uh, switch between or we can play both at the same time. Uh, some specialties is uh, only the second oscillator is able to play noise which is uh, important for snare drums or hi-hat sounds. Uh, also we can switch off the keyboard tracking of the second oscillator this means uh, no matter which note you are playing on the keyboard uh, it's always the same sound uh, pitch it's always the same pitch so this is uh, important maybe just for uh, maybe like uh, when, when you're playing bass drums you normally want to uh, have the same pitch all the time no matter what key you play but for under other drum sounds like snare drums or so on it might be actually um, helpful that you can play different notes and you can play different pitches but you will see that later um, then also one very important thing is the modulation envelope which uh, is uh, which makes it possible to let the frequency of the oscillator start at a higher pitch and then fall down which is especially useful for um, for the bass drum but you will see that uh, when we get to this also one very important thing uh, for creating drum sounds is the amplifier envelope because using this we can uh, make the sound uh, short uh, because normally uh, drum sounds are just like a short hit it's not, not a long note like string sounds or so on so we always uh, have to put the sustain to zero and then uh, we have to play with decay and release to create a very short sounding drum sound so let's start with the bass drum because uh, the bass drum of course is the first thing we want to hear and um, as the bass drum is normally a very deep and round sounding sound uh, we will use the rectangle wave it's also possible to use the triangle or the sine waves but uh, I personally I like the rectangle waves most and we will use the second oscillator because we will turn off the keyboard tracking and make sure that the mix uh, control is all the way to the right because we only want to hear the second oscillator now since we uh, turned off the keyboard tracking no matter which key we play we always hear the same note but uh, of course it's way too high for a bass drum so we will detune it to a very low note So, but it still does not sound like a bass drum, of course. So we have to use the modulation envelope, which allows us to let the note start at a higher frequency and then fall down to the low sound. If you, uh, you have to tell the synthesizer to use the oscillator too. With the amount you can uh, uh, set the high frequency or even a lower frequency but this makes no sense in this case. So we take a higher frequency than the original and with the decay you can control how long it takes until the low frequency is reached. So if we play the sound now it might sound like a laser beam. But if we shorten the decay time it already sounds more like a drum. Of course we can lower the frequency, uh, that's too low maybe, now it sounds similar to a bass drum. Okay, so that's not so bad, 
but of course uh, it still uh, the, the note is still played too long because if you hold the key I, I will show it on the keyboard the note will not stop so we have to use the amplifier envelope turn the sustain to zero and play with the decay and the release uh, controls to uh, get a shorter sound. It's still a bit too long, so we just make it a bit shorter. Okay, this might sound all right. Okay, so now we have a sound that sounds uh, already good enough, so we can sequence it and then uh, play a bit uh, more with the controls. So I will now sequence the bass drum. Okay, so we now have the sound and we can uh, maybe use the filter to make it more deep. Or maybe adjust the modulation envelope a bit. Okay, that sounds all right, I think. Okay, I think that sounds all right. So let's select the second channel to create the snare drum. And of course the snare drum is mainly made up of noise. So we will have to use the second oscillator again and we will use the noise waveform. Uh, at the beginning the noise sounds pretty dark but uh, you have the possibility to control the noise color with this control. So it sounds bright and uh, you can use it better for creating a snare drum. Of course we also use the amplifier envelope again to create a shorter sound, so it sounds like this. It's maybe a bit too long still. So, this is a good start of course, but it still uh, sounds a bit uh, boring. But uh, one thing that I uh, think uh, fits very well for creating uh, snare drums is to use this, the, the first oscillator and uh, use a square wave. To be able to better uh, hear what's going on I turn the mix knob all the way to the left so we only hear the first oscillator because it does not sound like a snare drum at all. By using the LFO we can uh, give it a more interesting and more s percussive sound. something like this. Does not sound so bad. And now if we mix it again, so we have both both oscillators, it sounds like this. Maybe we can uh, still adjust the noise color a bit. Maybe it's a bit too long. Too short. And of course we can uh, mix the oscillators to have a bit more of the noise. We're able to play the snare drum at different pitches. And then we can try which pitch uh, sounds best for us. Also you can you use a pitch that fits to your song. Maybe if, if, if your song is in D you can maybe use F or A or something like that. Let's use the F because it sounds good. So we will now sequence the snare drum. Sounds, sounds actually pretty well.
So let's uh, use this third uh, channel now to create a hi-hat sound. The hi-hat is actually pretty easy to create because uh, we simply use the second oscillator again and uh, use the noise waveform and we put the noise color all the way to the right so we have a very bright sound. And we use the envelope, the amplification envelope to create a short sound. And we use the high pass filter to remove the low frequency so we have a very bright sound. If we like we can also use the resonance to make it more interesting. But it uh, depends on what you're after. One useful thing you can do uh, with the amplifier em envelope if you use a longer decay and a shorter release you can simulate the close and open hi-hat sound by uh, depending on how long you press the key. So you can play now close and open hi-hat. So now we uh, sequence this again. So the last thing I will show you is how you can create a cowbell sound similar to the 808 cowbell. We use the fourth channel of the synthesizer and uh, basically it's just like uh, two rectangle waves at the same time. So we have to uh, turn the mix knob to the center position and select two rectangle waveforms. Now we have two rectangle waveforms at the same pitch if you play it. Now what we do is uh, we detune one of the oscillators, of course the second one, because it's only possible with the second one, to a interval that should be not uh, too harmonic. Something like this. Something like this should be good. Of course we also use the amplifier envelope to make it shorter. Mm. And then we uh, transpose everything one octave up. And maybe we use the filter a bit. No, that's too much. And now we have the typical cowbell sound. It depends on where you play. And now we sequence it. You can also use the fine tune of the second oscillator to make it a bit more disharmonic. And now we have the final beat.